up until now we have derived one we have started with this production function uh, and uh, from there we have derived the intensive form of the production function small y is equal to small k to the power alpha where small y is output per capita and small k is capital labor ratio uh, and we have also derived the capital accumulation equation capital k dot is s capital y minus delta capital k now we want to convert this <clears throat> capital accumulation equation in the per capita form <clears throat> we want to calculate we want to convert this capital accumulation equation in per capita form per capita form of capital accumulation equation per capita form of capital accumulation equation mm -hmm. right okay now just think about it you have uh, uh, like this so capital k dot is equal to sy minus delta k right okay can i take a step back and can i write what is small k small k is k by l right okay <clears throat> can i write what is log of small k equals to which is log of capital k minus log of capital n yes okay. can i take the uh, the time derivatives of both the sides yes i can so i can differentiate this with respect to time I can do that. So what will this come out to be? 1 upon small k because the derivative of log k is what? 1 upon small k. Derivative of log small k is what? 1 upon small k. d small k by dt. This is 1 upon capital K. <clears throat> d capital K by dt minus 1 upon L D capital L by DT. 1 upon capital L D capital L by DT. Right. Fair enough. Achha, what is D? D small k by DT? We have said that this is equal to the instantaneous rate. So it is small k dot by small k. So D small k by DT is small k. Uh, sorry, small k dot. D capital <clears throat> k by DT is capital K dot d l by dt is l dot this is capital k dot by capital k minus l dot by l huh? and what is small k dot by small k that is the growth rate in small k what is capital k dot by capital k growth rate in aggregate capital what is l dot by l growth rate in labor right Okay. Now, I want to tell you one thing that uh, there is an assumption which says that labor force is exogenously growing. at the rate n labor force is exogenously growing at the rate and this this population growth rate of the labor force growth rate is given to you uh, this is given to you this is exogenously given to you and this is also one of the weakness of the model if you 
or just have a look at this. Why? Because the model is not able to distinguish between the population growth rate and the labor force growth rate. So according to the model, in case if the uh, child is born today, that is the addition to the labor force. But once a child actually becomes a labor force, a huge amount of time has passed. But the law, but the model is assuming that the population growth rate and the labor force growth rate, that means one of the same thing, one. And the other thing is, there are only two factors which are affecting the output. What? Capital and labor. Out of that, you have assumed one of the factors growth rate is as given to you. So everything is now dependent upon how capital is growing over time. Uh, so that is also one of the weakness. Anyways, so you are given that labor force is exogenously growing at the rate n. So some of the books, they write it like this. That LT is equal to L0 e to the power nt like this. So L0 is the initial amount of labor. <clears throat> and n is, let's say, uh, the growth rate in labor. Uh, n is the growth rate in labor. And this LT is the, the labor at the time, at the time t. L0 is the initial labor. So let's say I take the log of both the sides. plus log of e to the power nt. But I hope you know this rule. Log of e to the power some constant is a constant. You take the time derivatives. This will be zero because log L naught is given to you. That's a constant. Plus you differentiate this NT with respect to N, uh, T, which is coming out to be N only. What is log of capital L by, uh, D, uh, by DT? This is one upon L DL by DT. What is DL by DT? L dot. And this is N. So this is N. So this is what I meant to say that uh, uh, the growth rate in labor force is equal to N. Growth rate in labor force is equal to N. Fair enough. So we have done two things, Abhita. One, we have written that small k dot by small k is equal to k capital K dot by capital K minus L dot by L, right? Okay. And this is capital K dot by capital K. And what is L dot by L? N. What is L dot by L? N. Okay. What is small k dot by small k? And what is capital K dot? You have written. What is your capital accumulation equation, which was what? Sy minus delta k. Whole upon k. Right? Minus. I can write like this. Fair enough. So let me write in a proper way. So small k dot by small k is S capital Y by k minus delta minus n, right? Third step, small k dot by small k equals to S. Can I divide numerator denominator by L? I can. Capital K by L minus, I can take minus common. This is N plus delta. Huh? Okay. Now what it, what it becomes? Small k dot by small k equals to S. What is capital Y by L? That is small y. Output for labor is small y. Upon what is capital K by L? Small k minus n plus delta 
right? Then I can write k dot as small k dot as uh, just uh, so this thing will become what s y minus n plus delta small k and beta. What is small y? You have just written small y is the production function in the intensive form. What is that? Small k to the power alpha minus n plus delta small k. This is small k dot. This is the key equation of the solar model. This is important for us, a very important expression. This guy is the key equation of solo model. This guy is the key equation of solo model. Okay. How do we interpret this? So let me write the two expressions which we have derived. Hmm? S small y minus n plus delta small. Hmm? So let us just compare. Let us just compare. So you have one, the capital accumulation equation. And this is now capital accumulation per worker equation. This is the key equation of the solar model. So here, what is capital K dot telling you? Net investment. Here, small K dot is telling you net investment per worker. Hmm? Here, S capital Y is telling you gross investment. Here, S small Y is telling you gross investment. Per worker, right? Here, delta k is telling you replacement investment or total depreciation, whatever, to keep the uh, replacement investment means replacement investment to keep the capital stock unchanged. Here, n plus delta small k is telling you. Replacement investment per worker. But there is one addition here. What is delta k? That is delta k. So what is delta k telling you? See, in, I mean, in every year, there are n new workers which are also added. So, sorry, the new thing is this nk. I'm so sorry. Because delta small k is fine. Just say delta capital K is your depreciation. Delta small K is depreciation per worker. What is NK? That's an addition. NK is telling you, uh, see, there are N new workers which are added every year in the economy. So you have to equip these N new workers with the same number of machines so that the investment per worker, it remains constant, right? Or the net investment per worker, it remains constant. So, for example, in this class, there are, let's say, 10 people. And everyone has five units of capital. And there are five new people also come into this class. So, if you want that everyone should have now five units 
per uh, of capital uh, each then those five new workers which have just come into the class those also should be equipped with five units of capital no so for every n worker i mean there are workers which are being added for every worker there are n new workers which are being added so you have to equip these n new workers also with the same amount of capital per worker huh? with the same amount of capital per worker so please write this in each period n new workers would be added to the economy who were not there last period who were not there last period right uh, so these new workers also have to be equipped with the same amount of capital to keep capital per worker unchanged to keep capital per worker unchanged so the idea is i'll again repeat that uh, statement so in class let's say there are 10 people and five more people are now added earlier everyone in the class those 10 people had five units of capital each now those five you five more people have come in case if you do not give them the same amount of capital which everyone has and the capital per worker will fall so you have to if you want that capital per worker to remain constant then this would mean that you have to equip these five new people which have been added to the class with the same amount of capital per worker otherwise capital per worker is going to fall so this is the key equation of solo model and this is the interpretation of this key equation of solo model right okay thank you beta